Naomi Smith was described as a normal teenage girl who was quite shy and lacked confidence. She also loved music and gymnastics, but on one fateful night, Naomi left the house to run errands for her mother and was never seen alive again. Before I start this story, I just want you to know that it's for educational purpose, and I mean no disrespect to anyone that I talk about in this case, and I upload once or twice a week. Today's story is about a solved true crime case, and I'm going to talk about the murder of a 15-year-old girl Naomi Smith. Naomi Louise Smith was born in Coventry on March 4, 1980 to parents Brian and Catherine Smith. She was the fourth child and only girl. She had three older brothers and both parents were taxi drivers, but her mom later became a bus driver. They were originally from Coventry where Naomi was born, but they moved years later to a small town called Nuneaton, which is in Warwickshire, and that's where Naomi and her three brothers grew up especially Naomi because they moved when she was a year or two old. Naomi was such a sweet and caring girl who loved animals, and her dream job was to be a vet. She was a very dedicated person and also worked hard in school and she got good grades. Naomi actually loved playing instruments in church and she was part of the church band with her friends and they all played different instruments. So at the time of this case Naomi Smith was 15 years old and she was still in high school at Hartsell School and was looking forward to write her exams which never happened. During the day of September 14, 1995, Naomi had been with her best friend Emma Jones at the rehearsals of a local marching band in which Emma played the xylophone. After the rehearsals Naomi had been dropped off outside her home and was seen to walk inside. When Naomi got home she was just chilling when her mum asked her to post a letter at a local post box that was around 9.30 p.m. The post box was located about 200 yards from her home on the main road in her area, which isn't far about a few minutes' walk, so he parents expected her to back literally within five minutes, but ten minutes later she wasn't home so her parents waited a bit longer about half an hour. And Nomi was still not home so they were thinking maybe she met one of her friends in the estate because at that time they were living in Brett's Hall estate where all the kids play together so her parents thought she might be chatting with her friend so they didn't think there was anything wrong. So after an hour goes by at around 11 p.m. and Nomi was still not coming home, they started to get worried because it was already late and dark outside. Naomi's father, Brian Smith, who worked as a local taxi driver went out in his car to look for her. Mr. Smith drove to the house of Naomi's best friend, Emma Jones, to see if she was there. But she wasn't so Emma joined Naomi's father to search for her, and they drove around the whole estate and no one was there so the next place they checked was at the post box where Naomi was supposed to post the letter, and she was not there so shortly after searching for her they decided to check the park where all the kids at the estate played which was a few meters from her home so when Brian and Emma got there they immediately saw something lying beneath the children's slide, and when Brian went to investigate what it was he discovered his daughter's body, Naomi Smith covered in blood her father, then noticed a huge cut across Naomi's throat, and he knew that she was already dead. So the police were called and Naomi's body was recovered, and she was pronounced dead at the scene and her body was taken for autopsy at the morgue. The autopsy revealed the cause of death was the huge cut on the neck because it was very very deep all the way across her neck and there was no way she could have survived with the injury. The autopsy also revealed that Nomi had been sexually assaulted and her genitals mutilated with a knife by her attacker and guess what another important evidence from the autopsy was revealed that the killer had left a bite mark on her left breast. As the news spread throughout the community of the horrifying murder of a young girl everyone one was too scared to leave the house, knowing the killer was still out there, and this murder shows the killer is very sadistic to do such horrible thing to a child not only had the person slashed her throat, but also mutilated her genitals. So the police started investigating the case as quickly as possible, and about 30 police officers were sent to the area where Naomi's body was found in the park the estate and the surrounding areas to search for clues or evidence for the next few days. Despite a thorough search of the area, police were unable to find a knife or weapon that might have been used in the murder. So the police started carrying out door-to-door -door inquiries and also made several appeals directly to the public through the media. Within the first day or two of the investigation police questioned over 50 different people and some were witnesses and family and friends and with this, they were able to piece together the time of Naomi Smith's murder because, 
During the day, Emma's mom picked up both of the girls from the rehearsals and drop off Naomi at her home and made sure they watched her enter the house before leaving and that was the last time they saw her. So police was sure Naomi made it to the post box that night and was attacked on her way home and also a girl who lives opposite the post box said she had seen Naomi posting the letter that night, she didn't see anything suspicious though, literally she just saw Naomi walk to the post box post the letter and then she turned back around and walked down an alleyway which leads to the park where Naomi's body was found. And apart from the girl who saw her no one else in the area had seen Naomi at all and that was the only witness they had. So police continued with the appeal for the youths to come forward, and the appeals were accompanied by offers of a reward of £10,000 for any information that might lead to a conviction, and it actually worked. The police got a call from someone that lived in the area saying they had seen a group of young guys around which looked suspicious and they thought the police should know so the police took the information very serious and a week after the murder, early on the morning of September 21, 1995. Five local men were arrested on suspicion of murder. The men were taken to the police station for questioning, but got nothing out of it, so they released two of the men, and after 36 hours of continuous questioning the three remaining men were released without charge. The police felt kind of defeated because they put lots and lots of time, effort, and energy into that one lead and got nothing out of it, so they started compiling list which was an offender profile of around 800 local men aged between 15 and 28 had been produced for DNA mass screening. And one of the first batches that was sent for lab testing there was a DNA match. It was to a 19-year-old man named Edwin Hopkins, who lived in the same estate as Naomi Smith he lived with his parents, and was unemployed, so police quickly found out that Edwin was a collector of knives, and this wasn't just like an innocent harmless collection, this was actually an obsession with knives and it started since he was a child. His father introduced him to knives because he used to take him hunting when he was younger, they used to kill and skin animals like rabbits together and when. Edwin got older, he started carrying knives with him everywhere he went like even to school. Police then looked in Edwin's criminal history and they found out that wasn't actually the first attack that he had been accused of he had been accused of a very similar attack. A woman had reported to police that Edwin had attacked her in the exact same park. When Naomi Smith's body was later found, this woman told police that she was walking through that park when Edwin approached her and started talking to her and she talked back because he didn't seem weird or intimidating to her at first, she felt comfortable just talking to a stranger she just met at the park, and he even offered a cigarette she took it. Both of them smoked and chatted for a while, and she turns around to leave so she walked for a little while and hears footsteps behind her and she turns and noticed that Edwin has started following her so she keeps walking a little faster, but then the next thing she knows Edwin jumps on her from behind and pins her down. Edwin Hopkins tried to rape her, but she somehow managed to fight him off and she runs to safety and she reported the incident to the police, but there was one part of this attack that really stood out to the police before the woman managed to fight him off and run away Edwin Hopkins had bitten her on the breast just like Naomi Smith, but unfortunately absolutely nothing came out of the victim reporting the incident to the police, which I don't know why because Edwin was never arrested and he was never charged with anything. So now that the police has evidence against Edwin they started treating him like a prime suspect, and as part of this they started questioning all his friends and family to get the idea of who Edwin Hopkins really was but also better idea of what he was doing on the night of the murder and as it turns out, someone has been covering up for Edwin Hopkins all this while. Someone in his own family who was his own sister had lied for him this whole time and now that they have his saliva DNA his sister admitted to the police that she had lied in the beginning to protect her brother but now she was ready to tell the truth. So this is what Edwin told the police at the night of the murder. He said that he was just relaxing at home with his sister they were playing Trivial Pursuit and then he offered to go to the shop to buy them some snacks which was beer and chips. This was about 9.30 p.m. and he said he was gone for about 15 minutes and he was back home before 9.45 and the two of them continued playing the game all night so when the police first heard this story they had gone to his sister to ask if the information he provided was correct and she said yeah that's exactly what happened he was gone for 15 minutes came back and we played the game all night and it turns out she lied he was not gone for 15 minutes he was gone for nearly an hour and she had no idea what he was doing the whole time and then when he returned an hour later he was wearing different clothes so his sister asked him why he was wearing different clothes and he explained that he tried to buy some milk from the shop and then 
On his way home, he had spilled it on himself, because he had no lights on his bicycle so it dropped and splashed everywhere and on his clothes so luckily he had clothes in his bag so he quickly changed. At the time when he told his sister this story she didn't think much of it, because she doesn't know there's a young girl dead in the park in their area, so that is why she had initially lied to the police, and I think she just didn't want her brother to be in trouble with the police. So as more and more evidence was being revealed she started thinking about it again and thought to herself what if her brother had done this, and she had covered up for him so that was when she quickly went to the police because she couldn't keep it anymore, so now the evidence were quickly mounting up against him and before the police arrested him they wanted to confirm one more thing. They took Edwin's dental records and compared them to the bite mark on Naomi's breast and it was the exact match, and it was a very obvious match, as well because Edwin's Hopkins had lost one of his front teeth in a fall from his bicycle, and his remaining teeth had moved to close the gap, therefore his teeth had an unusual profile so as soon as they saw the bite mark, and they saw Edwin's teeth they immediately knew he was the killer. So finally 19-year-old Edwin Hopkins was arrested and charged with the murder of Naomi Smith, he was taken to the police station and confronted with all the evidence police had collected against him and Edwin didn't try to defend himself he just didn't comment about anything in all the interviews he didn't admit to anything and he didn't say anything he was very emotionless. So the case was due to go to trial and on the very first day of his trial Edwin Hopkins stands up there and pleads not guilty despite having all these DNA evidence against him, he said he's not guilty so the trials goes ahead and all through the trial Edwin was still sticking with the lie that he went to the shop and returned home quickly without going past the post box and he said he never saw anyone. And we are never going to know what happened on the night of the murder because Edwin never confessed to his crime and at the end of the murder trial in January 1997 Edwin Hopkins was found guilty of the rape and murder of 15-year-old Naomi Smith for this he was sentenced to life in prison with the minimum of 20 years which means the soonest he would have been able to get out was when he was 39 years old. And that would have been in 2015 and it didn't happen but he was actually released from him. Prison in 2021 and put into an open prison, which means he can freely move about in society during the day due to good behavior. And this is all I have for this case. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, please subscribe and leave a thumbs up down below, and thank for watching once again.